kingdom that cannot be moved. Dwelling in a kingdom that cannot be moved is our focus for the month of November 2022. Dwelling in a kingdom that cannot be moved. Hebrew chapter 12 verse 28 as our anchor text for the month. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom that cannot be moved. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reference and godly fear. We are dwelling in a kingdom that cannot be moved. A kingdom that is unshakable. A kingdom that is constant. That's the kingdom that we live in. People of God, we are not in religion. We are not in religion, but we are in a government. We are under an authority. We are under a government, an invisible government that has its headquarter in heaven. We live in a kingdom. And we have said that every kingdom there are certain characteristics that every kingdom possesses there will be a territory for every kingdom or every ruling authority there will be people that live in that territory there will be laws there will be all sorts of things and we've mentioned few things and today we are going to be focusing on understanding the kingdom concept of culture understanding the kingdom concept of culture where there is law where there is constitution the law and constitution is to shape the culture of the people how the people behave so we have the teaching for today, understanding the kingdom concept of culture. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 20. Apostle Paul speaking there, the concept of culture there, he said, and unto the Jews I became as Jew. I, when I get to Rome, I will behave like them. Praise the Lord. Understanding the culture of a place is key to understanding how things work in that place. Understanding the culture of a place, when you get to a country or when you get to a place in the natural sense, we need to understand how they behave in that place if we must maximize what that place has in store for us because that is what will determine our success or our failure in that land understanding the culture now in the country that we are right now in the united kingdom england we use some words that you know they are they are, they are endearment words Somebody will say, good morning, darling. Hello, love. Some, it's a culture. Somebody can come from somewhere now and be thinking somebody is making pass at you. You are very, very wrong. Praise the Lord. Somebody might think so. Somebody can be coming from somewhere. You know where I'm talking about. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Glory to God. And then they'll be thinking, oh, he said, he said hello, love to me. Eh? Hello, love. <laughs> and the person didn't know that it's a cultural thing. It's our way. Praise God. Thank God some people are even copying it now from that side. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Praise God. Now, in, here in this country, we drive on the right-hand side. Okay? Somebody somewhere, they drive on the left-hand side. Okay. 
and then they come in here and they want to drive on the left hand side here what do you think will happen there will be commotion praise the lord there will be commotion there will be trouble there will be commotion there will be trouble so an attempt to what that simply means is an attempt to impose a culture of where you are coming from to the culture of where you find yourself will cause what we call cultural conflict and that's what many of us do as christians in quotes or as children of god we try to impose the culture of the world to the culture of the kingdom and when we try to impose the culture of the world to the culture of the kingdom there will be conflict praise the lord there will be conflict there will be conflict so we are remember where we are coming from we are in a government if you like we are in a country if you like we are in a nation that nation has its own culture you cannot impose your culture on the kingdom so to understand the kingdom and to maximize the benefit and resources of the kingdom we must understand and be conscious of the culture of the kingdom of god we must understand remember we said constitution and law is to help us to formulate a culture in any nation there will be law there will be written laws okay there is constitution that will guide how we behave which will become our culture our way of life praise the lord that is how it is in everywhere in every nation now you can get somewhere and um, you may not necessarily break a law as it is because when you break a law there will be punishment now when we break culture there may not be necessarily be punishment to that but there will be reaction there will be reaction praise the lord there will always so for us to maximize now we said if we've been following our teaching the kingdom of heaven has a lot to offer us loads of resources but to tap into or to maximize that resources of the kingdom of god we must as a must we must consciously do so we must consciously we must consciously cultivate the culture of the kingdom now what is culture what is culture the teaching is going to be brief and then we open to questions okay praise the lord and then we go into our prayer as time permits us if time permits us to get into the prayer then we pray what is culture culture can be defined as a way of life culture can be divine can be defined as a way of life it is the values the ideas the customs the social behavior of the people The kingdom of God has a culture. We are going to do a little bit of reading this morning. Let's flip our Bible. I said culture can be designed, de defined as a way of life. As a way of life. Let's turn our Bible to the book of Matthew. 
Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, I'll read from verse 3. The Sermon on the Mount of Jesus Christ that we all know as the Beatitudes. Okay. There are a few things that we can avest from there as part of how we should behave in the kingdom of God. Matthew chapter 5 verse 3, beginning. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for their is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the poor in spirit. What do we mean? What does Jesus mean by that? Blessed are the poor in spirit. What he's saying there is people that are poor in spirit, they will search for knowledge. When you are poor, you want to be rich. Praise the Lord. There is no man that is poor that doesn't want to be rich. Is that they are looking for the way to be rich? Or they are not necessarily doing something about it and, and be thinking that something will fall? So what Jesus Christ is saying is that those that are poor in the spirit, they will be looking and searching for knowledge. So what that simply means is that as a person of kingdom, as a kingdom individual, as a kingdom person, the culture of the kingdom is to seek for knowledge. So you cannot be a citizen of the kingdom or a child of God, in quote, a citizen of this kingdom of God and not pursue after knowledge. That is why he said in the book of Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, that this book of the law will not depart out of your mouth. You shall meditate there in day and night. A culture is born from there. So as children of God or as the citizen of the kingdom, you citizen of the kingdom, children of God is the same thing. Praise the Lord. As children of God, citizen of the kingdom, we must be endeared to seeking for knowledge. Hello? Are we catching something? He said, Blessed are the meek. Verse 5. For they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those that are meek. Who are those that are meek? The gentle people. Kind people. A culture is born there that the kingdom of God that we belong to there is a way of life that we must imbibe. We must be gentle in our approach, but that doesn't mean we should be stupid or foolish. Praise the Lord. We must be gentle and kind in our approach to life and to people. Verse 6, blessed are those which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. It's a culture of the kingdom. We must be righteous. What's righteousness? Bible student, what is righteousness? Doing the right thing. Right. Justness. Doing the right thing all the time. Doing the right thing. Whatever it's right. Whatsoever things that are good. Whatsoever things that are right. Think on this thing. The Bible said so whatsoever things that are right is a culture of the kingdom. As a kingdom citizen, you must do something that is right. Not once and for all, but again and again. We must do what is right. We must do what is right part time as children of God. Now that leaves quest, it leaves us, you see, 
the essence of us hearing the word of God is to, is to build us, is to equip us. And that's why you hear me say all the time that we are all work in progress. There is always room, in fact, there is always mansion, not rooms, for improvement. We may not be there yet, but God expects us to get there. That's why I said, be holy as I, your father, I am holy. To be righteous, to do the right things all the time. So we must do the right things all the time. We must do the right things all the time. We must do the right things all the time. All the time. We must do the right thing all the time. Blessed are the pure in heart. For they shall see God. That's a culture. Blessed are the peacemaker. For they shall be called the citizens of the kingdom. They shall be called the children of God. They shall be called the children of God. Blessed are the peacemaker. Peace. The Bible said, you see, there is one scripture that guides me all the time. It, 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 um, it helps me in everything that I do. Be at peace with all men, without which no man shall see God. It's my guiding philosophy. You may, do, you may do me wrong. The only thing is that we assess the relationship and know, okay, there must be a, a limit. But that doesn't mean that I will be off. You know, I, I, don't, I don't have anybody in my mind that, okay, I don't talk to him because he has done me this. It can't happen. It can never happen. And I'm not, we are not in talking terms. No. Yeah. The, the, the worst is we just greet. Hello, hi, end of story. No conversation, nothing. I mean, I just want to make sure that I'm, I'm ticking the box. That's it. That's it. And that's every one of us. That's what we must do. That's what God expects from. Remember what we said? That we live in the kingdom. We live in a government. And every government, they have certain characteristics. Okay. The kingdom of God has culture. Every attempt and any attempt for us to bring the culture of the world and impose it to the culture of the kingdom, there will be a clash. There will be a culture clash. So we have to fit in to the culture of where we belong to. Jesus Christ said, we live in the world, but we are not of the world. We are not. I mean, there is, there is kingdom. There is one kingdom there is called the kingdom of the world. There is one kingdom here is called the kingdom of God. Whichever one you belong to, the better you manifest whatever that is there. So you cannot be in the kingdom and be manifesting the culture of the world. The Lord God will give us understanding. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I said the Lord Jehovah God will give us understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. The foundation of every culture is how we think. And how we think will determine how we behave and what we do. And that's why the Bible said in the book of uh, Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7. It said, for as a man think." In his heart. So is he. Somebody even said so he will become. <laughs> so he will become. Praise the Lord. As a man think. So is he. As a man think. So is he. Then what does that mean? What that simply means is that we must think right. When we come to the kingdom of God. We must change the way we think. Because we are not to conform to the world. Romans chapter 12. Verse, verse 2, he said, And be not conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good. Please, can we reduce the eater a little bit? 
what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God? It is very important for us to change the way we think. If we don't change the way we think, nothing will change. But that shall not be us in the name of Jesus Christ. I said that shall not be us in the name of Jesus Christ. Be not conformed. In other words, don't be formed by the culture of the world. Hello? Don't be formed by the culture of the world. There is a way the world behaves. Now, put it this way. Sometimes we see some things among ourselves, especially, you know, that we appear, that some people you appear to be upright, and some people see certain things and they question it. Why? Because there has been a clash in culture. Some people will say, and they call himself a Christian. And, and he said he's a pastor. And she said she's a pastor's wife. Imagine. 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 She goes to church more than anything. Else. She's a Christian. In fact, she speaks in tongues more than even the angels. Imagine what she did. Imagine what she did. She did, she did that to you. Really? Are you kidding me? Why? Because there is a clash. We must endeavor to avoid clash. Clash. People of God, we don't belong in in uh, we don't belong to religion. We belong to a kingdom. We are citizens of the kingdom. We are the children of God. We belong to a royal family. We belong to a royal family. We are a royal priesthood. And holy. You hear, you hear that? And holy nation. That's where you belong to. You can, now, look at those words. Well crafted. To let you know that it's not about religion. It's about a government. An holy nation. Does religious have a nation? No. It's all about government. That's why he said in the book of uh, Isaiah, he said, Isaiah chapter 6 verse 9 there about, that to us, a child is born, a son is given. Government shall be upon his shoulder. We are in a government. We are in a government. And if you want the government to serve you well, you must line up with the constitution, the law, and behave the culture of the kingdom of God. So, we must renew our mind. We must unlearn. We must relearn. Praise the Lord. We must, as children of God, there are, many, there are many things that have been pumped into us many years, even as from toddler. But they don't necessarily mean that they are right things. We need the right perspective to the kingdom of God. Right perspective to the kingdom of God is what will give us the right perspective to life so that we can maximize this present life and secure our life after now praise the lord praise mighty jesus christ now what is the mind renewing agent what is mind renewing agent thank you the mind renewing agent is the word the word the word of god is the renewing agent of the mind. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 26 that he might sanctify it and cleanse it by the washing of the water by the word of God. By the word of God. Joshua 1 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. You shall meditate therein day and night that you may observe to do according to what is written therein. For then you shall make your way prosperous 
And then you shall have good success. And then you shall have good success. This can only happen when we take time to study the word of God, to read the word of God, and apply whatsoever that we learn in the word of God to our life. Remember, I said, according to Jesus Christ's teaching in the Beatitudes, he said, blessed are the poor in spirit, which place a responsibility on us as children of the Most High God. When you know you are poor in something, you look for solution. So as children of the Most High God, we are meant to live a studious life as citizens of the kingdom. Now, in this country, this nation, there are many things that is available for the citizens, but they will never knock at your door and say, you are qualified for this, go and get it. Praise the Lord. You are, there are many things, many, 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 many things. There are many things. There are many, I'm mindful of words. <laughs> Praise the Lord. There are many things, let me just put it that way, that you can, you can tap into and make the best out of the nation. So also is the kingdom of the most high God. There are many things that is available to us. Many things. Many things. What we call miracle is a product of the kingdom. It's, it's something that, we should, that will happen on their own when we line up accordingly. It should line up. That's, what, that's why Jesus Christ demonstrated that. You remember he said, the kingdom is here. I'm here with you. And he began to manifest all sorts of things. Telling us, these are the things that is available in the kingdom. These are the things that is here. So it is his living a studious life. Every child of God, every citizen of the kingdom. The constitution of heaven for the earth, which is the Bible, is not a book that we refer to only on Sunday. If you don't have a Bible, after the service, you must pick one and take it home. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus Christ. And not just take it home, and read, and read, and read, and read. We must meditate on the word of God and think about what the word of God says. And in rounding up, let's look at the source of conflict against the kingdom culture. The source, what is the source of conflict against the kingdom of God? The source of conflict is what the source of conflict against the kingdom culture or against the culture of the kingdom, the source of conflict is imbibing world culture. That's the source. What gives because we want to imbibe that culture of the world. Some things the world do, because we relate with the world with our five senses. We want to we want to apply the same thing. We want to, you know, is it that you are dead? We cannot serve two masters. Okay, you serve one and despise the other. You can't serve both. It is not possible. That's why the Bible said in the book of James chapter 4, verse 4, Ye, adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is an enmity with God? Don't you know that the friendship of the world is an enmity with God? You can't be a friend of the world of God, of the world. You can't be a friend of the world and be a friend of God at the same time. No, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. It can't work. You cannot be the friend of the world. You don't. You want to do this. You, you want to do the things that the world are doing and be at friendship with God. It's not possible. Can we live in sin and expect grace to abound? God forbid. God forbid. God forbid. God forbid. God forbid. God forbid. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. 
Galatians chapter 5. Mm. 19. Beginning. Mm. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. The works of the flesh. The work of the flesh. Adultery. Fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revilings, and such like. Of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in the past, that they which do such things shall not, shall not what? Shall not inherit. They cannot be part. Their citizenship will be, de will be, will be denied. They will be stripped off of their citizenship. That will not be us in the name of Jesus. That will not be us in the name of Jesus Christ. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. Against such, there is no law. In the name of Jesus, whatsoever that entices and endears us and want to stick us to the things of the world or the other kingdom in the name of Jesus. There shall be deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ. The grace of God that passes all human understanding. I ask for everyone under the sound of my voice this morning, online, on site. The grace of God that passes all human understanding, that helps man. That grace is made available for you and for me in the name of Jesus Christ. The grace to live a life of separation. Total separation. From the world. And uh, separate ourselves. To the kingdom of God. And behave like true citizens of the kingdom. Thereby making the fathers to be full of joy over us. That grace is released today in the name of Jesus Christ. We will not fail God. We will not fail destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. This life, everything that you need, whilst you are still here, whilst I'm still here, Everything that you and I need to maximize this life, the Lord God will hand it over to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I said the Lord God will hand it over to us in the name of Jesus Christ. Everything that we need, the wisdom, knowledge, understanding, to secure our place in, in eternal life, that grace is released afresh in the name of Jesus Christ. That grace is released afresh in the name of Jesus Christ. The devil will not sift any one of us in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said to Peter. He said, my son, Peter. I perceive the devil has come to sift you at wheat, as wheat. But I pray, I pray for you. That your faith will fail not. However. When you have overcome all these challenges, strengthen those that comes after you, that the devil is trying to do the same thing too. Therefore, in the name of God the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, fresh grace, not to be sifted as wheat by the devil, that grace is released upon each and every one of us in the name of Jesus. 
Bible said, what profit is it for any man to gain this whole world and lose his soul? What profit? What profit? The life of after now, which is eternal in nature, is the ultimate. But where we are right now is a, leap, is a leaping pad to where we are going. In the name of Jesus. You will not miss the mark. Amen. I will not miss the mark. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. We give you glory. In Jesus' precious name. Have you been blessed this morning? If you have been blessed, give God a big clap offering. Praise the Lord.